Hey, seventh graders. I wanted to talk to you about the other technique that we're going to be using for the Mona Lisa parody project. And that is drawing not only a character, but drawing directly onto paper with pencil. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now what you may not be able to see, well, I know you can't see it. Off to the side, I have some references of Elsa because I'm going to be doing an Elsa Mona Lisa. What I've done here is I took the printout that is posted on Canvas. It's a super simplistic outline of the Mona Lisa. You can see underneath there. And then I took a blank piece of paper and I just put it on top and I can see the outline pretty well underneath this blank piece of paper. I also have just a plain old pencil. That's what we're going to get started with. Now, if you're doing a character, this gets a little bit trickier. The outline of the Mona Lisa is basically just going to serve as a way for you to place your character on the page and make sure that you have the size and proportions correct. I will use a few things of the original outline and I'll actually just trace those. But most of what I'm going to do again is just draw on top of the outline so that I have the placing of the character correct and the proportions of the character correct. So what I'm going to do is start with the neck and I'm looking at Elsa off here out to the side. Her neck, she has a very thin neck. Now from there, I'm going to get her face just kind of generally blocked in here. And again, I'm tracing over top of Mona Lisa's face. I am not tracing her face, but I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said tracing. I'm drawing over top Mona Lisa's face just to get the approximate size correct. And I'm going to have to go back and tweak that a lot in just a little bit. All right, next, I'm going to start to draw in Elsa's dress. She's got kind of a collar that comes up to the side. It's on the side here as well. She has her dress deep dips down, kind of a deep V there. So I'm completely ignoring the dress that the Mona Lisa is wearing in the outline. And then I'm going to start to draw her shoulders in. She has very small shoulders, actually. And her shoulder is going to come right down that way. So ignoring the outline of the hair there, because I'm actually not going to be using that. That can get a little bit tricky. All right, now I'm doing her other shoulder. And then her arm's going to drop down this way. Okay. Now from there, I have to deal with, you know, what does the torso of Elsa look like versus the Mona Lisa? Uh, the Mona Lisa, she's got a big bulky dress on. Elsa is not wearing a big bulky dress. Her dress is going to look a little bit slimmer. It's going to be in a little bit more. So I'm going to draw it a little bit closer to this cloth that drapes over the shoulder. And then we've got the arm coming up this way and then it bends back this way. And then same thing with the other side of the arm. So the Mona Lisa has this great big blousey dress on. I'm totally ignoring that big blousey dress and I'm trying to just draw what the arm would look like right underneath. If we could actually see the arm and the cloth of the dress was not in the way. All right, and then her sleeves have these really like pointy um, endings to them. I'm gonna draw her hand in there. That I can pretty much just kind of trace. I might have to make it a little bit smaller since Elsa is kind of elegant and dainty. And I'm also going to be tracing that cloth that's draped over her shoulder. That I'm just going to trace. I don't really need to do much to that. And then the side of her arm that comes down this way. Now again, her sleeve looks really, really puffy. I don't know if you can see it right there because she's got this great big drapey dress on. I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to make Elsa's arm a little bit thinner. And then down here as well, 
I don't need that big puffy sleeve, so I'm gonna ignore it and make Elsa's arm look a little bit thinner. Then I can also see that the side of Elsa would probably stick out right about there. So we've got arm, torso, this is like her waist, and there's a little bit of space in between. Here is the other arm, or hand, sorry, I didn't mean to say arm. All right, and then, because we have all this empty space down here, I think I'll actually go ahead and make it look like I can see Elsa's dress. So I have to look at where is her waist and then where would the dress naturally continue underneath that. Okay, so this is just a rough sketch. I would probably have to go back and tweak a lot of this. Um, from here, I would go in and start to place Elsa's hair. I mean, she's got that lovely messy braid that she wears. So I'm gonna to start to sketch that in here. Again, all of these things, I'm definitely gonna to have to go back and tweak in a little bit once I get the approximate placement of everything. She's got that lovely braid coming down the side of her shoulder. Now her face, I'm gonna start by, this is a really way, good way to draw faces. I'm gonna start by looking at the size of her forehead, the size of her eyes, which are huge. And then where is her nose and where is her mouth relative to the shape of her face? So her eyes are kind of right about here. And I'm just gonna put in the general shape of those and she's going to look kind of like an alien. And then her nose is right about there. I'm just gonna represent her nose as a line and then her mouth is right about there. Again, I'm just gonna represent that as a line as well. And then her eyebrows are gonna fall somewhere around here. And then another eyebrow somewhere around there. Now from there, I could go back and add in the details of her giant irises because she has giant irises. And pupils. And I could get in the details of her braid. Braids are actually kind of tricky to draw. If you've never tried to draw a braid, they can be really, really tricky. So don't be too hard on yourself if you're like, what? If you're trying to draw a braid, I don't know how to do that. Now we're gonna stop there because I think you get the main idea of how to use that outline to draw a character, or like you saw in the digital version of the example, you can draw certain parts of Mona Lisa and then add whatever features or whatever details will pertain to your theme that you're trying to create. Um, I did wanna add a background, and as you can see here, I don't wanna to go too overboard um, you know, with all the different characters. I wanted to keep it a little bit more simplistic. So I found this really cool graphic of like an ice or a snowflake here. I did that by just searching for Frozen 2. I looked for images and I found that. So that's what I started to place around Elsa. It was pretty easy to make. I had to look pretty carefully at first, but it's basically a diamond with a diamond behind it. Of course, these are just kind of quick sketches. I would go back and make my sketch look a little bit better before I traced everything with a Sharpie or a marker. And then I went in and added these diamonds and these diamonds. 
And then I started to add these lines in between them. All right, I would want to go back and make that look much nicer. But for now, hopefully you get the idea of how you can start to sketch using paper and pencil, as opposed to doing a digital sketch. Either one is fine. It's totally up to your comfort level. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask and make sure you get references for what you're doing. Those are so, so, so important. References make all the difference so that you have an idea of what you're actually trying to draw instead of just trying to remember it because that is really, really hard to do.